Hello, everyone at Inside Today's Locked On Canadians. The Habs are beaten by the Flames. Josh Anderson might actually be the first cursed human being and the next entries in the Montreal Canadiens Ring of Honor and who I think the funniest option would be. All that and more inside today's show. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 954 of Locked On Canadians. We are, of course, your daily Montreal Canadiens podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day of the week, wherever you get your daily podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify, or if you are watching on YouTube.com, we're on video as well. I am one of your hosts. I am, of course, Scott Matla. I am flying solo again tonight. My co-host is back in in this land i should say she is back from her trip overseas she'll be back for tomorrow's episode just as i am heading on the road so you will see laura tomorrow and remember tell all your friends we are on twitter at lo underscore canadians i am at scott matla of course and tuesday night coming off what was a a good but frustrating weekend for the montreal canadians they beat the bruins in overtime had that weird, frustrating game against the Vancouver Canucks. And then they come into this game against the Calgary Flames, a team that has been struggling to generate this year. Not with all the rebuilding they did and the retooling and sending pieces around, everyone thought, okay, maybe they snap back into form here. And the Flames kind of hadn't. And I called it a potential trap game for the Canadians, one that could get away from them very easily if. If they, if they didn't stick to all the things that they did well in the Bruins game and for the Canucks game for the most part. And ironically, they did most of those things for the most part. It's it's just so frustrating. They ended up losing this game 2-1. It was almost 3-1 at one point. A good challenge overturned that. But the first real... I'm not even going to call the Flames' first goal a good look. Nazem Kadri is kind of in the middle of the ice, gets a pass, spins, blind fires a shot on the ice past Samuel Montembeau's pad. It's one nothing Flames on a play that shouldn't happen and something the Canadians, pro- after the Canadians should have probably been on the board at that point. Because as you will learn in this game, the theme was lots of really good looks right into people or wide or off the post was the theme of this game. The Canadians come right back, and Uri Slavkovsky, great play, keeps the play alive, feeds Christian Dvorak, who passes over the back of the net, like around it, over to Gustav Lindstrom, of all people, who scores his first goal as a Montreal Canadian, ties it up 1-1, 17 seconds after the Flames goal. Then not much of anything happened in this game. The Flames got a second goal. Lindstrom is covering one half of the net. Jack Eye is coming back. Brendan Gallagher is tracking back. Jack Eye loses vision on the guy that is behind him. Puck pops there. He slots it into the mostly empty net. 2-1 Flames. And then it was a later goal. It, Elias Lindholm was like three feet offside on what was a goal by Andrew Mangiapane in front of the net. Good coach calls it, overturns it. It is 2-1. And... In what was the theme of the night is just nothing bounced the Canadians' way. Cole Caulfield at last check had eight shots on goal in this game. The Canadians had 30-plus, and Caulfield had almost a third of them. That is an absurd amount for a second straight game. Yuri Slavkovsky did this on Sunday, remember, where he's just generating chances over and over and over and over again, and nothing is going in. He missed... You know, Jacob Markstrom coming off the right wing by about this much off Markstrom's shoulder up into the corner. Markstrom down out swimming. Caulfield tries to kick it out of his feet and fire it along the goal line because we know he can pick that angle. Fires it wide and out of the way. 
Josh Anderson, we will get to Josh Anderson in an entirely separate segment, but I don't know what they have to do with this guy. It, it's He didn't play badly. He, he got chances in this game. Everything possible, zero goals to show for it. Just a maddeningly frustrating game that I can't quite wrap my head around. And it doesn't get any easier for the Canadians now because Vegas on Thursday, Boston on Saturday. That's two big rematches from their best games of the year. Vegas is going to come out, probably looking to make a statement. Boston, after losing the Canadians, went out and just put an absolute hurting on the Buffalo Sabres tonight. At last check in that game, it was 5-2. Devin Levi had been chased from that. I, I'm trying to still wrap my head around what this team is right now because they're doing little things right. There's really good things to like in the offensive zone. There's good things to like in the transition game. They, for the most part, kept Calgary pretty quiet. Calgary had shots, but it never felt like the Flames were the more aggressive, more dominant on top team in this game. Their goals came in their moments of opportunity. Uh, I'm going to try and bring up natural statric here behind me because I'm as I'm looking at the stats on this and like something doesn't feel right here. The expected goals at five on five were 2.35 to 2.04 with the Canadians leading that Canadians won the possession battle Fenwick and, you know, maybe not shots for, they didn't have as many at even strength. It was a one shot difference, more scoring chances, more high danger chances. But then if we go to all situations, the Canadians had an expected goals for 4.48 and Calgary had a expected goals of 2.9. Everything changed so much in that situation. And the biggest story from this is the Canadians power play got chances. They got so many chances and didn't cash in on them. And not for a lack of execution. They did everything right except finish plays off. The Flames, for whatever reason, left Cole Caulfield with all this space on the power play. And the pucks were going into Caulfield's feet that if they were in his shooting range, that he is able to fluidly follow through on these things. You're looking at multiple goals here. You know, Josh Anderson rang one off the crossbar. Mike Matson hit a crossbar. Anderson at the end of regulation gets robbed with a minute and eight seconds left on the power play by Markstrom's glove. They did a lot of things right here. It's just there. There was no luck in this game for them. The Flames three best, well, no, three out of their four chances. They had a two on zero on a, a shorthanded rush and skied the net with Blake Coleman there. It's they are just so close to being the team that they need to be, and they're struggling to put the finishing touches on that. I don't want them to do the Leafs, Carlisle, PDO Bender. I don't want them to do what the Canucks are doing now because it isn't long term sustainable. But I'm trying to find where where is where is the median here? Where is what this team is? Because they're better than the one goal they scored tonight, and I don't think they're that team that's going to run and gun six goals and or five goals a night against Toronto there. But this is a team that can score goals. And one of the biggest things I've seen is well, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? My biggest change is I move Anderson down to power play two, move Slavkovsky down to power play one. Put Jesse Olin in on power play two somewhere. I love Tanner Pearson, but maybe not on this. And just tweak those a little bit. Get shooters. Get your shooters out there. It's it's hard to recap a game where the team didn't play badly. The Canadians played a very good game. They played an unlucky game, and it wasn't pretty. It was kind of boring at times. But they played a game that had structure and played into their strengths there. And they just need to fine tune ever so much little, little bits, just a little bit more in there. And I think they're going to be okay. Like I said, coming up, they've got Vegas. They've got Boston coming up again. I haven't seen what's beyond that, but I'm sure it's going to be. Let's see here. Vegas Golden Knights on Thursday, Bruins on Saturday, Ducks on Wednesday, November 22nd on the West Coast. 3.30 3.30 p.m. game on Friday against the Sharks. Kings on Saturday the 25th, and then the Blue Jackets to end November on the 29th. There are, 
at least three winnable games in there. If they can split that trip, maybe steal a point off of someone like the Kings, again off the Bruins or the Golden Knights, I think that's a pretty successful trip for the Montreal. Not even trip, because the two games are at home, then they go on the road after that. It's a pretty good end of the month here in November. I want them to find their way back to being the team that we saw against the Bruins there a little bit. They kind of missed the boat a little bit on this one, but I'm not too worried about it. They played well. If they played badly and lost 2-1, I'd be concerned. They didn't play badly, though. And coming up in our next segment, we got to talk about Josh Anderson. I don't think he played badly, but something is deeply, deeply wrong there. And we're going to talk about that coming up next. But first, today's show is brought to you by your friends at Sleeper. And an NHL season brings all sorts of new possibilities. If the Canadians can get over the shooting curse, Cole Caulfield is scoring 50 goals. We know the Habs aren't Stanley Cup favorites, but darn sure they're good. You know, you can still bet on them if that's how you're feeling. And you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy Hockey app of Locked On NHL Network, because Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and Daily Fantasy Hockey, especially because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. McDavid's got a new coach. They won the other day. The Leafs are probably going to rebound after a rough end to October. And all you have to do is pick players that will record more or less than their sleeper projections and things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, or more in any given game. And to win 100 times your bet, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Habs fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. All I have to do is use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and condition apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. And we have big news here at the Locked On NHL Network because Locked On has launched the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel on YouTube. And Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every single league. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. You might see my face there too. And if you're not familiar with my face, I am Scott Madla. I am one of your hosts here on Locked On Canadians. You will see my wonderful co-host coming back next. And if you hear my neighbors plotting around, it's okay. They're Bruins fans. They don't have any manners whatsoever. So we got to talk about Josh Anderson because I, I'm usually the first one who's happy to be like, hey, you know, He's paid a lot of money, score some goals, do the things right here. In this game against against the Flames here, I'm looking at Josh Anderson and going, I can't even be mad because you're doing all the things I would ask of you correctly. You're getting to the right areas. You are generating chances off the rush. You're using your frame. You're keeping plays going for the most part. And it's just, there's no luck. It's... The joke is that, oh, it's Rene Bork all over again, right down to the fact that he's wearing the same number, 17, cursed. And I just, I don't know what to say about it. And people are like, well, why is he out there at the end of the game? Because he's been playing well tonight. He's hit a couple of posts. He's had chances. He's gotten robbed by Markstrom. But Anderson played well in this game. But we can't rule out. He's actually probably cursed. Because no one could generate some of these looks and chances and just continually either have it saved miraculously, hit the pipe, have it called back for something. And I don't think it's a line thing anymore. I think this is a guy that is squeezing that stick about as hard as he possibly can at this point. And I get it. It is frustrating. Josh Anderson likes to score goals. The powerhouse looks to put, likes to put the puck in the net. And we love watching the power horse put the puck in the net. He's great at it coming off the rush. He leads the league in drawn penalties, which is a huge credit to him, considering he plays a physical game, 
plays on the edge, but his speed is allowing him to draw penalties. It's allowed that Canadians power play lots of opportunities to move up the rankings there. They were 10th going into this game, which is nothing short of incredible. And yet Anderson sits there on zero goals this year. As Andrew Berkshire put it on Twitter, it is kind of funny uh, in a dark macabre way that out of everybody, Gustav Lindstrom in his like first real, real game action here for the Canadians immediately scores. Meanwhile, Anderson is doing everything possible and can't buy a goal. And people are like, well, what do you do with him? Do you bench him for a game or do you put him in the press box and have him watch one? I, if he were playing badly, like mistakes, all these turnovers, I would say yes. Against the Flames, I don't think he was the problem at all. I think he was doing all the little things that you would want to see from a player of his caliber and just no luck. There was just no luck for him. And that's tough because it's, I don't know if it's, he needs a bounce. He needs to score one off of his kneecap or off of his butt, off his face, his very handsome face or something, but he's got to break that duck at some point. And when he does, I'm imagining it's going to feel like a weight off of his shoulders here. We've seen Brendan Gallagher bounce back into form here. A couple of goals this year, and he looks like himself again. We saw Nick Suzuki get back into form, points in, or goals in four straight, playing well. And Anderson's not the only one just being cursed by shooting luck. Uri Slavkovsky shooting the puck a lot more, putting pucks in dangerous areas, not always getting rewarded for it. He obviously got the secondary assist on Lindstrom's goal tonight, but Missed a primary assist early in the game. Fed one right through Uyghur's legs. Nutmegged him. Caulfield flubs the pass a little bit. Gets the shot off just a little bit wide there. I don't know if it's just everyone is overthinking it. Because they they went through that 2021-2022 season. Where nothing went right. And even last year, not a lot of things went right. They had some good, you know, some, a lot of good storylines out of that but things didn't go right. And I'm wondering how many people are wanting to not have that happen again. So everyone's choking the stick a little bit tighter there. They're trying a little bit too much. And I know that sounds weird. Oh, they're trying a little bit too much. How can you try too much? Anyone who's played hockey or played sports knows that sometimes when you're in a rut, you are tensed up. You are not loose. You are playing hockey like a robot and not the Sidney Crosby kind of robot like the upright meat more shoot puck robot style thing. And it ruins what makes your game so effective. Caulfield's a very good innovator with his shot. And that when he gets it, he's very good at changing the angle and he's struggling to pick his shots. He's getting shots off yet. Like I said, he had eight in this game against the flames. Anderson's doing everything. He's getting to those right areas. It's not like he's not generating the chances. It's just, he needs one to bounce to a goalie. That's it. He just needs to get one in there. And I think those floodgates are going to open up a little bit here. It's they're so close. And if Slavkovsky is going a little bit, if Caulfield starts putting goals in again, that aren't in three on three overtime, which are great. Don't get me wrong. This offense is going to stop tensing up so much. They can play a little bit more free and loose. I look at the power play. Everyone is second guessing their shot until someone goes, well, I guess I'm going to shoot it now. And there's no follow-ups to things. Just, it's a team that they just need. And I hate, it sounds like a cop-out and I don't want it to sound like a cop-out. They just need a little bit of a break. They're not going to get it in this part of the schedule, but they've got some good tests coming up that if they can keep that defensive structure going into these games here and generate chances, all good things are going to come through that. The process is there. I can see what their thinking is. Everyone just needs to stop acting like they have a knife pointed directly at their back because everyone is playing tense up like this and they aren't making plays that they should. We've seen what happens when the team is loose and free flowing. They're dangerous. They're creative. They're not far off from that. And it all starts with if Josh Anderson gets that goal, it's going to start a run. He's done too many good things in the past couple games here to not get rewarded for them. And when that damn burst, it's going to be a flood of horses or power horse goals that we are hoping. There's a favorable schedule for it coming up. 
I guess we'll see what's coming up there. What would you do with Anderson? Tweet us at LO underscore Canadians. Do you move him up? Do you move him down? Do you sit him in the press box for a game? Maybe controversially? Let us know. But coming up in the final segment, the Canadians did honor Pierre Turgeon before the game today. Kicked off a very long, fun chat in the Eyes on the Price Slack. And we're going to get into what that entailed coming up next. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. Laura will be back hosting the show tomorrow. I will be on the road for some very, very important work meetings, unfortunately. So before the game, it was Hall of Fame induction week here. And Pierre Turgeon, you know, maybe not most famously from the Montreal Canadiens, but from the Montreal Canadiens, was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame and was also honored in the Canadiens Ring of Honor at the Bell Centre before the game tonight. He was the last captain at the Montreal Forum, and then I believe he passed it off to Vincent Dampus afterwards. And I looked at his time with the Canadians. He was here two and a half years total, give or take. And my thought is, okay, didn't win a cup with them, didn't win a whole lot of awards, but he is up in that ring of honor there with guys like Guy Carboneau and Saku Koivu and other players there. And I believe it was Habs on Reddit and Mark Dumont who are having a conversation on Twitter. And it said that if they are in the Hockey Hall of Fame, the Canadians will put them in the Ring of Honor. And so that sparked the discussion of who is the funniest possible person that will soon go up in the Canadians Ring of Honor based on that, those standards of things. Uh, not retiring numbers. Obviously, the Canadians treat that with much reverence for the mo- for everything involved there that you have to be among the best. And I think the next jersey that will go up in the Raptors will be number 31. Not to before too long, I think number 11 will go up there once Brendan Gallagher is retired and they can give Saku Koivu uh, his day there. But it got me thinking over the years, some of the famous one off players who are Hall of Fame caliber players that would be going into the Hockey Hall of Fame who could see themselves honored there. And the first one that came up because he isn't up there is Doug Gilmore, who was in the Hockey Hall of Fame, was famously a Montreal Canadian for a season where his biggest contribution was slamming the penalty box door so hard the glass exploded. Seeing, having, and especially if they did this before either a Flames game or a Maple Leafs game at the Bell Center would bring out the absolute funniest reactions if they put Doug Gilmore up in the ring of honor there. But Corey Perry would make sense. He was part of that 2021 run. I could very much see them honoring him a little bit, maybe not in the ring of honor, but Habs legend Corey Perry is funny enough because Ducks fans are okay with it, which I know is a very weird thing, but I I've made that joke to Anaheim Ducks fans and they've been cool with it. And you know what? If they're cool with it, you let it ride. And I've been thinking, I'm thinking, okay, who else is a one-off guy that could make the Hockey Hall of Fame that the Canadians could honor in the Ring of Honor with their number up on the wall there in their face for all time going forward here? Eric Stahl, maybe. I don't know if he'll make the Hockey Hall of Fame. I think he makes the Hall of Very Good, but that's not the Hockey Hall of Fame. Um and I landed on one name. Guy didn't even play a full season here. He played a he played two months total. And he's up to go into the Hockey Hall of Fame next year. And that, of course, is Ilya Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk came in, signed that two-way contract at a time when the Canadians were not good. Not, not good at all. That was the year that COVID shut everything down and they were going to head into the bubble afterwards where... Might have been nice to have Ilya Kovalchuk, don't get me wrong. But I look at that and I go, Corey Perry was beloved by this fan base, has a long, illustrious career here, got you know all of his medals, got his Stanley Cup, got a gold medal, done everything there is to do with that. Ilya Kovalchuk does not have the Stanley Cup, does not have this, does not have that. Great goal scorer, one of the most lethal goal scorers in his time. And I look at that and I go, putting Ilya Kovalchuk in the Montreal Canadiens Ring of Honor would be objectively hilarious for me because he wasn't here an entire, he wasn't even here an entire season where it becomes a little bit less ridiculous. He was here for a window that was 
two and a half, three months at the most at a time when the Canadians did not have anything going in their favor. And all he did was beat the Leafs, beat the Senators, and then shush the crowd in New Jersey. He has three massive crystallizing moments for the Canadians. That was it. And I got to be honest, I love him for it forever. It is still very weird to be like, yeah, Ilya Kovalchuk was a Montreal Canadian for about two months. Then they traded him to the Washington Capitals. And then nobody played hockey for like four months after that. All a real thing that happened. I think Ilya Kovalchuk is the funniest possible option for who could go into that ring of honor there, honestly. If we're going by the, if they go in the Hockey Hall of Fame, they can go in the ring of honor standards here. And I keep saying ring of honor so much that I've got wrestling uh, on the brain, wrestling brain. And I I really want to see that. And someone brought up, did Pierre Turgeon, you know, was he worthy of going into the Ring of Honor with some of the other names in there? It's not really up for me to decide. That was when I was too young. I wasn't watching hockey, let alone Canadians hockey, growing up in Western New York at the time there. But it's not like they retired his number. And I do think that the next number, if it's not 31, it's going to be tough because Cole Caulfield's wearing number 22 right now. Steve Shutt should have his number in the rafters there. Five-time Stanley Cup champion, Hockey Hall of Famer, one of the most lethal goal scorers in this franchise's history, perennially underrated member of this, you know, franchise's history there. He is a name that I think should be in the rafters and talked about more often. Uh, I still stand by that Carey Price will be the next player to have his number retired. I think as soon as Price is done, they go, when do you want to do your jersey retirement? And I will be a mess that night. However, I want to hear from you. As always, you can tweet us at LO underscore Canadians, locked on Canadians at gmail.com. If you need a little bit longer thoughts there, who is the funniest possible person who could go into the ring of honor? Which Canadians player should have their jersey retired next? Tweet us. Let us know. We are on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. You can follow me at Scott Madla. You can put it in the YouTube comments. Just don't be rude to your fellow commenters. That's all we ask in here. Laura will be back tomorrow. They play Vegas on Thursday. The Rocket are back in action on Wednesday, the day you were listening to this, against Belleville. So much Montreal Canadiens hockey going on right now. I got to tell you, even if the team's struggling a little bit, there's plenty to tune in for. And speaking of tuning in, as I told you earlier, Lockdown has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's Lockdown Sports Today. It's here for your 24-7 coverage of top sports stories all day with the local experts of Locked On plus the national shows covering every single league. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. Also subscribe to us on, on YouTube, Locked On Canadians. We are also available wherever you get your daily podcasts, Google, Apple, Spotify. You can follow me on Twitter at Scott Mallow. You can follow Laura at The Active Stick. Everyone, we appreciate your support so much. We can't wait to talk to you again. We will be reunited as a full team going in on Sunday. So much to talk about, so much to do. But until then, we will see you all next time.